Hey, you may have had this happen to you before. You plug into charge, nothing happens. No voltage, no output, no smoke, but it's just not working. Dead USB power adapter. What do I do now? Well, of course, you do as I do and grab one from the literally hundreds of power adapters I have laying around doing nothing. Oh, don't have hundreds of USB power adapters laying around? Well, time to do the next best thing. Gonna have to make it work again. This adapter came with the USB monitor that I bought a while back and did a computer review, and no surprise, it didn't last too long. It's always the capacitors, right? It has to be the capacitors. I watched another video recently, and it wasn't the capacitors. And I actually don't expect it to be here either. I'll explain this in a bit. In this repair series, I make things go again. Sometimes it's a real fix, sometimes I just make it work again with the stuff I have lying around. This is the latter. I'll get into why that is later on. The videos get technical, so hang on and always ask questions if you don't understand something. Also, don't do this if you are unsure of anything before you take this power adapter apart. The components will be checked as well as some of the safety aspects. If you want to help out the channel, see the links on my webpage or in the description. Special thanks to my patrons and channel supporters for making this possible. Links in the description. So what is this adapter and what happened? This adapter is a rather generic USB adapter that came with a USB powered portable monitor that I bought. I never really used the adapter, but I plugged it in maybe one or two times and it failed already. I was using it as a small five volt power supply occasionally since it was on the bench, but it failed rather quickly. It didn't make any noise or do anything crazy, it just stopped working. The power adapter has the usual requisite marks, so it has a safety listing, it has the six in a circle, so it met some minimum requirements. It was only ever a 15 watt USB adapter with a five volt only mode and a three amp output. But this is plenty of power for a portable monitor. The adapter, when plugged in, now doesn't do anything, just zero volts on both output ports. The input is still drawing a small amount of power, so that means the fuse is not blown. This is good because this means there's very little chance that the primary side has gone away. It is not hiccuping or turning on and off, so it isn't an issue starting up. This means the auxiliary capacitor should be fine. Also, with a short lifespan this adapter operated for, I wouldn't expect a capacitor problem. This is usually a longer term problem. I attached this adapter to the high pot tester to see if there's any oddities with components across the adapter and everything looks good here. Fairly low leakage at all of the voltage modes. No DC leakage either, so this is a good thing. It means the transformer is likely not blown up. Something else has gone wrong and I think there's only one way to find out. I already tried to turn it on, but it's time to take it apart. Time to get the clamps out and crack this thing open. The case is so cheap, I can almost crack this open without any tools. But yeah, not much of a fight, and it pops right open. And the adapter is not wired in. It has the push-in AC pins, which means there is a chance this could actually go back together. That's nice. Okay, now is the part where it's time to explore the circuit board with various techniques to see if the problem can be found. Mostly, a multimeter is probably enough to get pretty far. This device is a fairly simple design. It uses an integrated primary side switch, which contains most of the components. I have done some in-depth teardowns, so if you wanna know what some of the components are when looking at this board, I would check the description for some of those. In this part, there will be high voltage and exposed mains. Well, sort of. But if you don't understand why, then don't do this at home. I mean, don't do this at home at all unless you are capable. I was going to mention another YouTube channel, but I'm not sure that's allowed without permission. So I decided to check the input side capacitors first. The way to test these without caring about the value or performance is to check if the resistance rises when on the ohm setting of the meter. There are other components, so this isn't foolproof, but it's a good indication that there isn't a short. In this case, the multimeter has a low resistance mode, and that was used to discharge the capacitors before being able to measure them. The capacitor voltage can recover to a few volts even after the adapter is unplugged. The input capacitors look fine. Next, checking the input of the full bridge rectifier. This has four diodes in it, and using the diode checking function on the multimeter, these all appear to be good and relatively low voltage drop too. This is all I'm gonna check on the input side. It doesn't appear to have any shorts and everything seems normal. Time to check the output side and, hmm, that's not right. The output should not be measuring near zero ohms across the two output DC pins. This is indicating that the output of this power supply is shorted. I don't think it's really shorted, but I think something is not working correctly. There are a few options of what could be shorted. There is a small USB control chip. There is a capacitor, well, a couple of them. 
and one of those little ceramics could be shorted as well. Okay, hooking this up with a USB adapter that goes to alligator clips and out to the multimeter with a loop to measure current coming from a DC power supply. I'll add a voltage measurement to this for clarity later, but it looks like, yeah, the output is in fact shorted. This should not behave this way. The voltage is staying low and the current is rising. When getting out a known good adapter, the output measured at a moderate level of ohms and also, when set up with the multimeters and voltage is injected, the voltage is allowed to rise and the current doesn't. So this is the normal behavior for a known good adapter. This is not what the broken one is doing. So getting another adapter to check if this behavior is shared with a larger USB adapter, and yeah, same thing. The voltage rises and the adapter doesn't draw any current. It's exactly what it should do. So we've identified the problem is somewhere in the output of the device, but what is it? Is it a shorted capacitor? Is it a shorted connector? Trace on the circuit board, the transformer, or something else? There's so many things to check. Well, there's another good tool to find shorts on a circuit board, the thermal camera. So while injecting a little bit of current into the circuit, we can see what will be getting hotter than everything around it. And yeah, it's like cheating. Look at that, that chip is shorted. It shouldn't be doing anything at all without the power supply being active. Neat. Also, too easy. Okay, time to check the resistance across this chip. Hmm, that's not supposed to be zero ohms. I think I've found the culprit. So time to lift the pins on this chip and see if the short goes away. Okay, so set back up with the two multimeters again, and yep, now this adapter's output looks just like the known good adapter. No short circuit anymore. Time to check this chip on its own to see if it's shorted outside the circuit. And yes, this chip is shorted. So what is this chip? This is a synchronous rectifier chip. This takes the output of the flyback transformer and conducts when needed to supply energy to the output. This chip is really just a more efficient diode. A diode is a one-way switch. Think of a check valve. When looking this one up, there's very little information. Actually, the exact model didn't come up with anything but there was one with one letter different. I didn't find anything in stock when trying to find this part on LCSC. The rectifier chips I did find in there look to be laid out a little bit differently, but I did find one with a similar pinout, but not quite the same design. It looks like it would work, but I'm gonna go a different way. So I don't have this chip. How can this be repaired? The main reason this chip is included is because it offers a lower voltage drop option to rectify the output of the transformer. So any real diode will have a forward voltage drop when forward biased. This voltage drop is a measurable value and when current flows across a voltage drop, this will dissipate heat and use power. At three amps, this can be pretty significant. So to hit efficiency targets, it's basically required to have one of these synchronous rectifier chips. Using what I have on hand, I found a three amp diode known as a Schottky diode. Look it up. This has a lower forward voltage drop versus other diode types, but still higher than the rectifier chip. This once installed should make the power supply work again. There is a reason to use a MOSFET instead of a diode at lower power levels. This plot of power dissipated at low current is shown here. This is basically current squared times resistance for the MOSFET and voltage drop times current for the diode. Notice something? One of these is linear and one of these is a square function. So as you crank up the current, the linear formula actually uses less waste power. This is one reason why IGBTs, look it up, are still in wide use in larger devices. They have a forward voltage drop as opposed to an on resistance. Okay, so checking out the output with a diode installed and yes, this is now acting like a reference supply again, no short circuit. There shouldn't be any surprises when applying power from the mains. Of course, with that big diode shoved in the back of the circuit board, it's not gonna fit back in the case, so this has all just got a lot less safe. I do have exposed connections here, and this power supply is isolated and has a current limit, so if things go real wrong, nothing too bad should happen. Turning on the AC power supply, now with low voltage. The lower voltage may trip an under voltage lockout condition, but that's okay. It's mostly checking that there is no short circuit conditions happening. Then the voltage can be ramped up a little bit more and ramping it up and yeah, it looks like the power adapter has now started back up and is providing the five volts at the output. Okay, time to change things around a little and get this connected to the load tester. Connected to the load tester now, I can put a five watt load on it and it looks like the supply can do that no problem. If I take it up to 10 watts, alarm. Oh yeah, I forgot this has a current limit set as well. So turning that up a bit, 
and clearing the alarm. Yeah, the adapter can supply 10 watts, no problem. The DC voltage is a little bit low because the voltage drop of the diode is in the output now. I could adjust this on the feedback side. The diode is going to get pretty hot though. We can check that out. It looks like this component is up to about 70 degrees C already. This is within a reasonable range for this component, but obviously cooler would be better. And in a sealed case, it's going to get a lot hotter than that. More on that in a bit. But with that, the adapter is back to working again. So yeah, one synchronous rectifier chip had failed short circuit. And this adapter did a good job of protecting the rest of the circuitry and replacing that chip with a diode that I had on hand now makes the adapter work again. If I do put it back in the case, I wouldn't use it beyond 10 watts with that diode though. It's just going to get too hot and break again. In terms of what caused the failure, I'm not sure. It may have been defective from the beginning. I doubt it overheated because it never really saw any abusive conditions. If you have an idea, share it in the comments. So that's about it. This little power adapter has one chip that's not available as far as I can find. I struggled to find a compatible part and it looks like LCSC has one that looks close enough. It is working again, but now it has a three amp shocky diode and this has a little more voltage drop than a synchronous rectifier. So the output voltage is a little lower, but it works now. It'll charge a phone or power a monitor. It will get hotter as this part will dissipate power and the efficiency is also lower. I wouldn't try to use it at the full three amps as it is without getting the proper rectifier back on the board. The power adapter does have a metal sleeve around part of the adapter, which I didn't even notice when taking it apart. So I cut a hole and have it contacting the body of the diode a bit. Maybe that can dissipate some of the heat. It's all back together now and with the slot cut out of the case and some high temperature tape covering the hole, it's basically working. It looks like it's going to hold up just fine with the diode. Still hot, but it'll work. I'm going to use this to charge my dumb calipers, I think. Anyway, I really have no need for this adapter. It's just an exercise to show that it is possible to repair these adapters and that one single component failing can cause the whole thing to fail. In this case, the shorted output was a pretty big clue. Getting that part removed, removed the short. I did have a pretty good look around and all the other power adapters I've torn down, yes, I keep all the bits, electronics hoarders, all use different pinout chips so it wouldn't work on this power adapter. So it got replaced with what I had, a diode. I did put in the diode the wrong way around the first time. I didn't check anything, I just soldered it back in. But the output capacitor shows which way it should have been installed. So flipping that around and now it boots right up and acts like a normal USB adapter. Again, it is a little low on the voltage since it has a voltage drop of the diode and it won't be as efficient since that part will dissipate more heat than a MOSFET. Let me know if you have a line on some of those synchronous rectifier chips. Mostly just curiosity. I don't plan to fix this beyond what I've done. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Goodbye.